<laughs> what is up guys? It's Simon from pianopig.com and today I thought I'd mix things up a bit by doing a question and answer video. I quite like doing these because they're just a bit of fun, you guys can get to know me a bit better and I also ran out of time to make a proper video this week. Shh. <laughs> so I asked you guys for your questions yesterday on Instagram and YouTube and we've got some cool ones so let's get stuck in with it. So for our first question, favourite Bill Evans tune? Awesome question. Um, as you guys probably know, Bill Evans is one of my all-time favourite players and to pick a favourite recording is quite a tricky question actually. Um, in terms of albums, I could probably start there. Uh, one of my favourite albums is uh, what was it Sunday at the Village Vanguard. That is an amazing album, uh, recorded live uh, at the Village Vanguard, probably on a Sunday. <laughs> Um, it's a really, really nice album with Scott LeFaro on bass, Paul Motion on drums, really, really nice trio. But as for my favourite recording of Bill Evans, oh, maybe his recording of How Deep Is The Ocean off his album Explorations. That's a really, really nice form, loads of nice block chords. Pretty tricky question, but that's probably my favourite album and a good recording I like of Bill Evans. <laughs> what is the best way to get more creative with right hand improvisation? So I would say the number one thing you should be doing is transcribing. If you find yourself just playing the same things over and over and you're kind of lost for new language, new things to play, transcription is without a doubt the best way to kind of get past this block because you can just really see into the minds of your favourite players, see how they're thinking about certain tunes and you're almost guaranteed to be given some nice creative lines, some new language, which you can then go and incorporate into your own playing. Which VST do you recommend to buy first? I love your sound. Thank you. Probably my favorite VST, uh, or the one I use all the time, that if I was to start again, that would be the first one I would buy, is Keyscape. Uh, the sounds on there are incredible. Like All my recordings, all the videos you guys watch on YouTube, everything I use is Keyscape. They are incredible. It's quite pricey, but I would say it's worth it. And if you're looking to get into production and building up your VST collection, you will not go wrong with having Keyscape in there. Why are we even alive? What's the point? We just live and die and leave no legacy. <laughs> Blimey, I'm not sure I'm qualified to answer that one. I don't even know why I read that one out. Let's move on. You do have a point though, you do have a point. What is the point? What's your number one tip for beginners getting into jazz improvisation? Awesome question. And I would say the key to just getting into jazz improvisation to start with is to keep things as simple as possible. I see so many people overcomplicating things and they try and learn about all the modes of the harmonic major scale, you know, before they've even just played around with the basics. And it's, I can kind of see why people do this, um, but you're gonna make the most progress as quickly as possible if you just sit down with like the pentatonic scale or the blues scale and just spend hours and hours just trying to get creative with it and see what you can come up with. So I'd say the number one thing is to just keep things as simple as possible and just make sure you're getting really deep into just like a few concepts at a time rather than scratch the surface of loads of different stuff. And don't worry too much about learning a load of abstract theory. I would more just play and then question everything you're playing and learn the theory behind that. And that way you kind of have something to apply the theory you learn to rather than just learning all this abstract stuff. I'd also make sure that you're listening to a lot of jazz as that's really the best way that you're gonna get familiar with the language. So yeah, keep things simple, listen and go deep. Next question. How do you hear the bass line in music that has a lot of instruments that make it hard to hear the lowest tone? So this one really just comes down to ear training, developing your ears, listening to a lot of music. And the more you do this, the easier it will become. So I recommend starting out with kind of more simple, simple recordings where the bass is a bit easy to hear. And as that process becomes easier, then you can move on to more challenging recordings. You can also use tools such as Transcribe, which make it quite easy to filter out the, the high end of the EQ. So you're just left with the bass. Um, that's a bit of a cheat way of doing it, but it still works. But yeah, just, just do it as much as possible and your ear will develop and it will, the whole process will become easier and easier. 
how to play like Justin Lee Schultz. <laughs> Justin is an incredible player. If you're not familiar with him, go and check him out. He's a, I think he's like a 13 year old um, jazz pianist who is unbelievably developed in his ability to play. But to answer your question, you wanna be able to play like Justin? I would say, do you really want to sound exactly like Justin? I mean, he's an amazing player, but I would encourage you to try and find your own unique voice. You don't want to sound like other people. I'm sure you can take inspiration from other players, your favorite players, transcribe them. But ultimately, you want to sound like you, not like Justin. But Justin obviously has a very advanced knowledge of jazz theory and jazz harmony and a very developed ear. So they're obviously the things that you could be working on to try and get yourself to that level. Do you have a recommended daily practice routine? I'm interested in a one hour routine I can do every day. Bonus points if I can incorporate vocal exercises into a portion of the practice session. The priority though is piano. Thank you. No worries. So yeah, I go into detail a bit more of this like in the Piano Pig Academy about how to structure your practice. But a common format I recommend, which I see works quite well, is to split your practice up into three sections. And those three sections are technique, language, and repertoire. So technique obviously involves scales and chords and finger dexterity and rhythm and anything that improves your technical ability to play the piano. Language is improvisation, so that's improvising, transcribing, learning licks, transposing licks into other keys, any sort of improvisational concepts. And then finally, repertoire, which is learning tunes, learning jazz standards, and putting all those elements from the other areas, from technique and language, kind of putting that into the context of a tune, which is such a great way to practice because ultimately that's why we play, is to play and perform songs and tunes. So make sure repertoire is in there and use that to your advantage by trying to include things from the other areas in there, if that makes sense. <laughs> so yeah, split it up into technique, repertoire, language, and you can be pretty even with those. So you said you had a one hour uh, session to practice, do 20 minutes of each, 20 minutes technique, 20 minutes language, 20 minutes repertoire. And that's a really good way to stay laser focused, stay motivated and make sure you're covering uh, a wide area of different areas of your playing. What are some albums that you would recommend listening to to get more familiar with jazz hop and neo soul, specifically in regards to piano? Awesome question. One thing I would say is that jazz hop and neo soul, although there are a lot of similarities, they are quite different. So I would try and start off by seeing if you can differentiate between those two genres. So for jazz hop, I would say, oh, Check out the album Rebirth of Cool by DJ Cam Quartet. It's a really good album. It's quite piano heavy, which is what you're after. And it's got a great balance between jazz and hip hop. Also check out Happy Sad by Kiefer. And in terms of Neo Soul, um, ooh, check out D'Angelo, maybe like his album Brown Sugar. Check out Jill Scott, Moonchild. But yeah, I don't want to overwhelm you. So there's a good little list to get you started. Next question, how to expand improvisations beyond the blues scale? Where do I start? Awesome question. And this is actually something a lot of people really struggle with. They spend a lot of time playing around with the blues scale and then they kind of plateau and they get stuck. And this is exactly what the five day improvisation course that I ran was all about uh, back in November. Um, which is now available in the Piano Pig Academy, by the way, if you're still interested. But the whole, the whole purpose of that was trying to break you through that plateau of the blues scale because it's so common where people get stuck just playing the same old things with the blues scale. And some key things that I see that help people break out of that is one, transcribing other solos. So listen to your favorite players, listen to your favorite solos and work out what they're playing. You could also work on incorporating chord tones into your solos, approach patterns, chromaticism, all these things that I've got videos on YouTube. There are plenty of other videos, loads of stuff in the Piano Pig Academy. You just got to get stuck in with it and try and really focus and work on incorporating those other elements into your blues scale improvisation. Who are some of your favorite pianists? Jazz, pop, classical, whatever. <laughs> so some of my favorite players would be Bill Evans, Kenny Barron, Oscar Peterson, uh, Robert Glasper. I guess they're all predominantly jazz players. Um, 
maybe some other genres. Classical, I'd say Debussy is probably one of my favorite players. All of those pianists I've just listed have greatly inspired me and my playing. And I'm just so grateful we live in a world where we can listen to what someone was playing 50 years ago. Uh, it's awesome. And that pretty much wraps it up for our Q&A video. Thank you to everyone who asked a question. And as always, thank you guys for watching these videos I post on YouTube. Always much appreciated. And yeah, if you enjoyed this, subscribe to the channel, smash that like button, and I will see you guys in another video.